Hello, um, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining this session. Um, my name is Wen Han, and uh, I'm now a solution engineer in Kong, Japan. Um, today, I'm going to introduce uh, how to use the um, Kong, uh, Kong project, the service mesh called Kuma, and how to use Kuma to do the tracing for your in, uh, cloud native microservices. First, um, today's agenda. So, I'm going to introduce Kuma first. Uh, which is the, the service mesh. I heard some people know the Kuma, so I'm, ve I'm really very happy to hear uh, some of the, the members know Kuma. And the next, I'm going to introduce what is the open telemetry. And uh, the third one is we can bind the Kuma and open telemetry together and what will be a good solution uh, for this combination. And next, at, at last, I'm going to do a demo and show you how, to, how easy you can use Kuma and open telemetry to do the tracing things, okay? First, um, uh, let me do a quick, uh, a quick introduce for myself. Uh, my name is Wen Han, and uh, I am a, a developer, uh, and, and I also have done with the technical support. And right now, I am the uh, solutions engineer, which is the, the pre-sales roles in uh, Kong, Japan. So if you have any questions, or you, you want to have some um, comments uh, on my uh, slides, or, or uh, so feel free to leave me a comment on the uh, Twitter or the X, or drop me a mail, okay? Thank you very much. So, <coughs> uh, first, um, the topic is what is Kuma? So, so these are the, uh, the famous Kuma in Japan. So, so you can see the, 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 fa the most famous Kuma, which is called Kumamon, in the South Japan. And we have the uh, beware of the, the bear in the North Japan. And the uh, most famous kuma in the One Piece, the anime. And we have the, another kuma called um, Kuma 30 Service Mesh. Okay, so kuma right now, it is a, a, CND, a CNCF a sandbox project, which was um, developed by uh, Kong, um, the, the, the company. And uh, today I'm going to introduce uh, the Kuma, the service mesh part. So, um, so the first let's talk about the uh, network design patterns for the cloud native things. So at the very first, uh, when, I, when I was a software developer, um, we, I built a very um, big uh, monolith applications and the application will provide some features which are exposed by one API. And the one API, we, we can use the uh, only one API gateway to expose it. This is the very traditional way. And uh, in the cloud native way, we have multiple APIs because we, uh, we, we destroy the, the monolith uh, application into multiple APIs. So you have to control the APIs, um, the connectivities, and you, you need to do the loggings to do the authentication, authorization. So you need to uh, put the API gateway between them. So you need more API gateways to manage a lot of the APIs. Okay, so for the gateways we talked about, is it, it is the north source traffic from the outside to the inside, to inside the cluster. So you need the Kong, uh, not, not only Kong gateway, but you need the gateway to handle the traffic from the outside to inside. Okay, and uh, go to the next part. So this one is more uh, like the Kong gateway, uh, Kong gateway combined with the uh, service mesh. So imagine that you have a lot of the APIs. So the, 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 the design pattern in the middle, you may have about um, 10, 10 APIs, 20, 20 APIs, you can handle it. But if you have 10,000 APIs, so some big project, you will have more and more APIs, and some new APIs will join into your cluster day and day. So in that case, it is not possible to register every, uh, every APIs to the API gateway. So in that case, we can use the service mesh to take control about all of the APIs. And in that case, um, you can use the service mesh to manage the traffic between, uh, inside the cluster, which we call the west-east traffic. So west-east traffic, which means the traffic inside one cluster, you can use Kong Mesh or other service mesh uh, products to, to control it. 
and use the gateway API, you can control the traffic from the outside to inside, which we call the null source, tra null source transaction. Okay, so today uh, we, we, I, I'm going to talk about the service mesh. So in this, so in, in this that diagram, you can see we have a, a service mesh control plane, and we have some um, data plane, which is the pink part in this small uh, box. So each service, we will, ha we will have uh, one uh, data plane, and the data plane will take charge of the pause of, to uh, manage the, the traffic between uh, the pods and the, across different clusters. So these are the features for the service mesh. Okay. So let's go deeper about uh, how you can use the service mesh um, more smartly. So in the control plane, we can, uh, what we can do is we can do the configurations to send, the, to send some new uh, configurations to the um, data plane proxies. And we, in the control plane, we can also set some policies, which you can add some new features. Uh, for, for example, you can you add some um, zero trust net networking, you can add some logging, you can add some um, uh, rate, rate limiting to control the traffic. You, you, you can use this one, uh, you, you can this, these features as a uh, policies in the control plane, and then the control plane will put the settings into the data plane, okay? And the next one is the monitoring. The control plane will see, will take control about the, the whole cluster. So every cluster uh, which are sending the traffic will report the metrics information or the logging information to the control plane. And then the control plane will expose this feature, uh, it will expose these loggings, these metrics information to a third party platform like Promiseus or like um, Datadog or like some um, ELK, extra, extra. Okay, and for the operation point of view, uh, the users, which is the administrator, can control, uh, can access to these control planes and doing some um, configurations or uh, apply some new CRDs or uh, using the directly uh, in API endpoint to take control about the um, control planes. Okay, so this is the uh, overview about what is the service mesh. Okay. <coughs> Okay, so next one is uh, the Kuma. So, so Kuma is one of these service mesh. So, so everyone knows there are there is a lot of um, there are a lot of other uh, service mesh like Istio and uh, Invoice, some things like that. And um, I think maybe some of you may have some questions. So, so compared to the uh, Istio, what is the good part for Kuma? Blah blah blah. So, uh, for my per personal point of view, I think there is no um, a, a good part or good bad uh, some black and white things. I think uh, every, is still, uh, every service mesh products has its own um, features, some good points. So there is uh, no best service mesh products, but the uh, most satisfied for your environment. Okay, so, so back to the Kuma part. So, so when you are not using the service, uh, the service mesh and you are going to deploy some new uh, applications, so example, you, can, you, 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 you have two services, and the services need to um, communicate with each other. And uh, so in the real world development case, you, have, um, you, you may have different teams for each service, okay? And uh, when the team is A building the service, the team's member needs to, to think about uh, what I can do, uh, what I should do for the loggings, and what I should do to, to keep the safe for my endpoint to, to to expose only the safe APIs and do the authentications and uh, some rate limitings, some things. So every developers, when they are developing their APIs, they must think about the common issues. Every developer will will met. And with the Kuma, with uh, or with, with the service mesh, the developers can only focus on their development about the main, the, the, the core features about their APIs. So for the other things, you can let Kuma's sidecar to do it. So Kuma will take control about the, the, uh, the loggings, the authentications, the, the rate limitings, and the other um, common tasks. And you can, you can put these layers up to uh, upper, and you can put the common tasks in the service, la service mesh layer, so you do not need to to control, uh, you don't, so the developers do not need to take everything, every uh, 
boring stuff on every uh, APIs. Okay, so this is the benefits when you are using the Kuma as a service mesh for your cloud native development. Okay, uh, so next I'm going to uh, talk about uh, how you can deploy Kuma. So, um, so this is the very uh, sim simple one, which, which we call the, the standalone uh, the, the standalone type of the de development. So in this development, we have one control plane, and uh, each service will have one uh, data plane as a sidecar, and the sidecar will report to the control plane, and the, the control plane will put the uh, new configuration to the, control, to the data plane, okay? And uh, uh, these are most, uh, most uh, the, the, the use case for this architecture will be, um, for example, for the Kuma, we was only available in one cluster or in one VPC, or something like that. So, and for the next one, this is the maybe the good part for the uh, Kuma deployment. We can we, we have a multiple zone deployment type. In this type, we have a, a global control plane, and uh, we have uh, each control plane. Uh, we have a zone control plane. So in this case, you can have your isolated. You can have your multiple isolated service mesh uh, clusters for your each clusters. And uh, the, so Kuma is not only available for the um, cloud native environment, it is also available for the bare metal, for the VM, for the other uh, traditional development. So you can have it mixed, which means that you can have one zone for Kubernetes and one zone for um, bare metal uh, or VM. They can be controlled and they, they, they can be used uh, in one, uh, Global control machine, uh, global control plane, okay. And uh, using this one, and you can see that uh, we have a, a zone egress and a zone ingress here, okay. So if you deploy the same uh, service on each zone, and it, it can be like act like a high availability uh, features for both both zones. So if one of the service is down, and the Kumas um, Ingress, control, uh, egress and ingress, we will try to find other services in other zones. So in that case, if one of the zone, uh, if one of the service is going down for zone A and the Kuma will find the same service in zone B and provide the uh, service with, with no issue. So this is like a handover, uh, a fail over things. So Kuma can also do that. So, um, in the real use case, you can check, uh, you can create your um, own uh, Kuma mesh uh, clusters for multiple regions, and you can combine all of the things in one global control planes, which, which will reduce the cost for the uh, management and operations. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so the next one is the um, policy. So policy means that you can create some new um, features uh, in the service level, uh, in the service mesh level, without changing anything for your service code. So in this case, in, in these examples, we can have some MTLS, we can use the ACL, or you can, we can use the um, con ingress and logins. All of the policies can be done in the Kumar part, in the service, uh, service mesh Kumar part. And we have, currently we have um, more than uh, 20 uh, policies and which is very easy to use. And uh, to apply these policies is very simple and you can just uh, type up commands, you can apply this uh, CRD and uh, the CRD will apply the new policies to the services which, has, which, is, um, which do not need to change any code. So here is, a, here is an example about uh, how you can deal with the policies uh, for the service mesh uh, de de development. So uh, I have a sample e a a application here. Uh, from the browser, I access to the uh, demo app, and the demo app will save the counter to a Redis server. So this, uh, so from the uh, demo app to the Redis server, we are using the um, service uh, c c connections. So. At the left part, I just delete. So there is one um, policy called the traffic permission, which we will set. Uh, the, so this is like the, the zero trust things. So 
uh, we, if I delete these rows, and you can see from the right side, the demo app cannot connect it to the Redis server, which means the policy is applied to the control plane, and the control plane will push the settings to the data plane, and the data plane see, okay, I don't have any policies, I don't have any uh, permissions uh, for these two services, so the access is going down. Okay, so you can see this is a very easy part. Um, you can control the um, which, so, so you can control the uh, the permissions from one services to other services, just using the cone policies. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> so this is for the the Kumar part. For the next one, I'm going to introduce the what is the open telemetry. So open telemetry is uh, a collection of tools which can be used to export the tracing date for your, upper, so for your softwares. And uh, the red part is the, an example for, the, uh, for, the, for one application. So you can see uh, for the, uh, so this application will cost about uh, 70 uh, milliseconds. And inside these applications, we, have, we can see uh, which part costs the most. So you can use these tracing informations to do the troubleshootings to your applications, uh, especially for the performance. So sometimes you, 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 sometimes you, you may think that the, uh, your, performance, your application's performance is going a little bit lag or some de delay happens and you want to see which part I, I need to change and which part is having some issues. We see with the open telemetry tracing informations, you can easily address uh, which part is having some issues, okay? And uh, yes, you see, the, uh, okay, so that, that, that's it. So that, this is a part for the open, tele, open telemetry. So next one is to, to combine the Kuma and the open telemetry to, together. So what will happen when you are using the Kuma and the open telemetry? So imagine there's, there's a real world use case that you have a very complex uh, cloud native systems, and uh, your user told me that I just feel that something is going, um, no, it's working, but it's a bit slow. Can you troubleshoot that? So in this kind of very big uh, cluster and very uh, complicated uh, applications, it is very hard to address which part has some issues. So for the traditional way, you may need to see the logs or uh, also check the, 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 the T-Shark the net, the wire sharks to see the packets from here and go to there. So I did that before when I was a support engineer. So it is, uh, it is, it, it is a nightmare to see the traffic, uh, to see the traffic from here to that part and to see uh, from this interface to that interface. And I can, I can address, okay, here is the performance issues. And uh, with the Kuma and open telemetries, you can very easy to uh, see uh, which part has issues because we, ha we can see the, the span, uh, we can see the tracing informations inside your applications. Then you, we, we can di di directly see which part has some issues, okay? So that is the good part for using the Kuma and the open telemetry. So using the tracing in Kuma, is ve it's very simple. We are using a CRD called the, the mesh trace part. So you can create a mesh trace and see uh, and set and configure that which um, uh, this one is the, so yeah, yes, this is the which mesh you want to output the tracing date. So by default it is called the default. So we, so you can have, mul mul you can have multiple uh, service mesh, right, in different zones and in, in here you can set I, I want to output the traffic tracing traffic from the default zones. And you can set the, the, the information here. And if, let's go in down. So the spec is, uh, this is a mesh, and uh, by default, uh, no, I'm sorry. So the default is, the backend for, for default is the open telemetries. And here, yes, this is the important part. So the endpoint is the OTEL collector, um, which is the open telemetry collector for this mesh tracing. So it is not directly send the tracing data to the uh, to a platform like um, the, Splunk, the Splunk or like uh, New Relic or something like that. So you are, we are using an 
open telemetry collectors to collect the tracing data first and then send the tracing data to the vendors. Okay? So why we are doing that? Because uh, the collectors have some new um, benefits for you to use because uh, when um, you have multiple uh, tracing parts, and so you want to output multiple uh, zones, tracings to one uh, vendors, you can use the, uh, the OTL collectors to collect all of the informations into one collector. So you can reuse the open telemetry collect collectors in, in this way. And next, the open collectors, uh, the open collector has the ability to send the tracing date to different ven vendors, Honeycob, Jagger, and um, the New Relic. So it has the ability to um, do it very uh, smartly. So I'm going to show how to, de how to configure this uh, OTL collectors later. Okay, so for the demo part, so today I'm going to create uh, some microservices and apply, uh, and I, I will show you how to apply the Kuma service mesh to it. And then I'm going to create a mesh tracing policy for my Kuma service. And the mesh tracing policy will send the open telemetry, uh, open telemetry informations to the OTEL collectors, and OTEL collectors will send the data to the OTEL backend, which I'm using the Honeycomb for, the, for, for this demo, okay? Okay, oh, I think this is the end of my slides. So I'm going to show you uh, what is my demo environment. So first, let's see. Um, okay, so first I'm going to show the, so let's see the collectors. Uh, OTL collectors, Honeycup, okay. So this is the um, open telemetry collectors. Uh, the most important part is at here. So the endpoint, I'm point to the Honeycup as the open telemetry endpoint, and I will uh, send my API keys to it. So, be, so don't worry, I will delete the, this key after the sessions. So no worries, and. Uh, Actually, you have, uh, with these um, collectors, you can do more things. For example, you can do some patch workings for your tracing informations, and you can have uh, multiple um, port. Uh, and here you can, you, you can have a gRPC uh, port to receive the open telemetry date, and you can have the HTTP port to receive the, HTTP, the open telemetry date, okay? Is it e e easy to use, to see? Okay, so for the next one is I'm going to show, uh, okay, so for the next one, I'm going to create a new applications and uh, make it joined to the service mesh cluster. So first one, let me see, I'm going to create uh, a namespace called mesh for devs. Okay, so this is the, um, I'm going to in, uh, install the applications in this, in this namespace. So before that, I'm, uh, so if you want to add some new applications to, Kong, uh, to Kuma Service Mesh, what you need to do is just to label it. Okay, so label it uh, with the namespace, uh, I'm going to call the mesh for devs. So, um, oh, I'm sorry, devs, dev, okay. Typo. So, um, because I just add a new level, which is called the sidecar injection equals enabled. And after this one, everything, every port in this namespace will be uh, inject a sidecar and we will take care of the traffic from the port. Okay. Okay, let me uh, do for the next one is we have a Kuma uh, for devs and uh, I will apply the K, um, hash K. Okay, so this is the, okay, I will create some things. I, will, I create um, two services and the two, de de two deployment. Um, okay, so this is, um, this can be a C at here, uh, get uh, all in this uh, mesh for devs. So you can see the, the port, we, the, there are two containers in, in this port. One of them is the um, applications, and one of them is the sidecar, the Kuber, uh, the service mesh sidecar. Okay, 
So um, next, I'm going to um, expose these uh, applications to outside. So for that, I'm going to use um, to I'm going to use uh, Ingress for it. So Ingress will expose these work applications to outsides. So I'm using the Kong Ingress controller, by the way. So just very easy to apply this one. Um, apply this ingress. Okay. Uh, now I have uh, pods and now I have service and I have ingress to expose this one. So let me try to access to it. So let me think here. So um, this is the um, default uh, endpoint for my uh, demo environment. I'm, I'm using work as a subpath to, to locate to my API endpoint. Okay, it looks good. So I worked for uh, 1.5 seconds and went to four meetings. Okay, so everything looks good. Okay, uh, next one, I'm going to uh, show how you can use the uh, Kuber mesh, uh, Kong, uh, the, yeah, the mesh trace to export the open telemetry informations outside. Uh, okay, so let me see my Date is at um, uh, yes uh, OTL mesh trace mesh trace okay so this is the CRD um, how you can you, how you can define a CRD to expose the open telemetry date to the uh, we just said the OTEL collectors okay so the important part is at here so the backends so. Currently, I'm going to use um, the open telemetry state as a backend. So the open telemetry, I'm going to use the OTEL collector. Um, so the name is a, a, a bit long, but it's a, it is an open telemetry collector a service. So I'm so Kong, uh, Kuma will send the open telemetry date to this endpoint, and this open telemetry collector will send the tracing data to Honeycomb outside of the cluster. Okay. So and oh, I'm sorry, and just uh, using some uh, name, some tags, OSS Japan uh, two zero two three, and we have some um, headers at here. Okay, everything looks good. So um, I'm just going to create. Uh, maybe I already have this created, mesh, mesh tracing. Okay, Kube is a typo. Kube control. Okay, already existed. No problem. <laughs> Sorry. So um, now I'm going to make some traffic to let the to, to let the applications to to generate some tracing information. Okay, I'm going to use this Isomania uh, applications to send the traffic. So uh, one, two, three. I can use it automatically. A repeat on interval. Um, okay, send the send the request. Uh, per second, okay. Okay, it comes a little bit uh, lag, but it's okay. I think I already collect some of the informations. Okay, from the uh, so yeah, this is the honeycup of the endpoint for the uh, application. Uh, for, 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 um, sorry, for the open telemetry uh, in, in information, and for the date part is called the meeting. Yeah, the meeting here. Uh, I can see uh, we have some tracing here. Yep. So see the details for this tracing. You can see that uh, my application cost one second, and uh, I have four uh, sub process, which are going, which takes um, uh, two hundred and fifty milliseconds for each. Okay, so you can see uh, my application is working well because I went to four meetings. So the, the, these are the four meetings for my applications, okay? So each meeting will cost me about 25, uh, 250 milliseconds. And for my day, I cost one second to go for meetings. So with this uh, example, you can see um, this is the very easy part for you to expose your application, open telemetry state to the other point. Okay, so I'm using the honey cup for my uh, endpoint and 
beside of this one, you can have other uh, open telemetry endpoints like Jaggers or um, the ELK or some uh, New Relic. Yeah, this is the uh, open, uh, open source standard, so you can choose whatever you want, okay? Okay, um, so this is, this is my backup just, for, just, just, just in case my demo w went wrong. Okay, um, thanks, thanks for listening. So this is all I have uh, for, my for my presentations. So do you have any questions you want to discuss? Okay. No problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.